Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. You may be wondering, why the H are we back at the Valley Windworks? Well, I got a little surprise for y'all. We got ourselves a special encounter that I'm actually kind of surprised works because this encounter in particular is supposed to happen on Fridays. The first Friday after you beat the Valley Windworks. you will have this special encounter. And you only get one, so you gotta make it count. So this is the Wild Drifloon. Drifloon is a Pokemon that was introduced in this generation, and for whatever reason, they decided to have it be one of those special event Pokemon that only occurs on certain days of the week. In this case, that day is Friday. But I am recording on a Saturday, so I don't know. I, you know, this is one of those times where I don't, I don't ask questions. I just take what I'm given. As you can see, Drifloon here is a little higher level than we are, which isn't a huge deal. But the situation you're going to deal with and oh my goodness, that did a ton of damage. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, the situation you're gonna deal with is Drifloon. Ooh, that was very close. Um, critical hits galore. Drifloon is strong first. Also very hard to catch. Also everything apparently is a critical hit. I'm assuming that's due to the focus energy it used. Yes, we will use the next Pokemon. Nah, we'll just set all this crap up, and then we're just gonna forget about it. Hopefully a... We're gonna start throwing Pokeballs here soon, though. We only have 19 of them, and... Drifloon itself has a very low catch rate. So... Just be prepared for a lot of that. Hopefully this video doesn't take too much of our time, because I've got other things I want to do. I'm very tempted to use one Absorb, but I don't want to knock it out. So I'll throw one more Pokeball, and then I guess we'll take a gamble. And we'll see what we get. Fingers crossed. Great! So this is going swimmingly. I believe at, uh... Even at, like, full... Like... We'll try this Absorb here. Um... Yeah, that, that's good. We'll whittle it away with Absorb. At its... Like, at maximum damage dealt to Drifloon where you've got it down to like one HP. Even in those moments, I believe that the capture rate of Drifloon is only like 10 or 15%. So just something to keep in mind. It's it's a bit of a nasty bugger, but obviously if you get it, it'll be in good shape. I think we can do one more absorb and it won't knock it out. Let's see if my math is correct. Yes. So we've got Drifloon on the ropes here. And hopefully that paralysis kicks in a little bit, because Drifloon is pretty pretty strong. So that actually really helps. So we're just going to basically use up the entire rest of the stock of the Pokeballs I have. And if this takes too long, I might fast forward through it. Okay, two shakes, not bad. Two shakes of a lamb's tail. It's got pretty good moves too, which I think is really interesting, is that for kind of a an unsuspecting encounter, you have this Pokemon that is relatively strong. So I think that's kind of nice. It gives you kind of a good fighter in advance. Ghost Pokemon are always pretty fun to use, as you, you couldn't tell already. It's a ghost balloon. With its cute little wisp on its head. Now what's nice is that Bonnie here, being the normal type. Oop, I didn't mean to use Pound. Great. Thankfully that, uh, <laughs> Thankfully that didn't happen. The only thing it should be able to use on us, I believe, is Payback. So I think Payback is a dark move. So let's see. Uh, ah, three shakes, pretty close. Feels like we're getting there. Yeah, this is a War of Attrition, so just be mindful of that. This is one of those situations where trying to catch yourself something as mighty as a Drifloon does take a little bit of patience. But having a normal type, in this case, is very useful. 
the majority of Drifloon's moves are going to be ineffective. It's not going to be able to do any damage to you. That's all that it has, but we have to be careful is that if this battle goes on too long, which, I mean, if you're taking a while to do this, then you can just come back and get a Drifloon later. But, um, there you go. First try. Great. Only had to do a few Pokemon deaths in the process. Thanks for sacrificing yourselves, everybody, for the Greater Drifloon. Got some level ups out of it, which is nice. Not for Steven, though, or Bart, because they both fainted. They were casualties, unfortunately, but it's all for the greater good, right? And we'll learn about what Drifloon has to offer right here. I like its little heart feet. I remember these Pokedex ent entries being kind of creepy. Uh, so Drifloon, Ghost Flying. It is a Pokemon formed by the spirits of people and Pokemon. It loves damp, humid seasons. So maybe Drifloon is from the southeast of the United States, perhaps? Yes, we will give Drifloon a name. Drifloon is male. In this case, this Drifloon will be named Dimitri. I don't know what's the right way to spell Dimitri. Let me... I just want to be careful here because you only get one shot. To, I mean, you don't. You can name your Pokemon. There's a name change rater person. And like I mentioned in comments of a previous video, you can go and, you know, I actually would like to add Dimitri to my party, and we will swap out Bonnie. She did her due diligence. We appreciate your contributions to the team, Bonnie. But yeah. So we got ourselves a Drift Loom, which is amazing. But I'm not going to waste any more time, so I'll catch you guys back in a second. Okay, guys, I'm back on Route 205. Got the team all healed up, ready to go. I'm actually going to switch Dimitri to the top here. Got a very Dude, heavy teams, a bit of a sausage party here on d -Mite Place. That's okay. Let's check down here real quick and see if there's a hidden item. There is not. So we've got plenty of trainers. Or not. Great. All right, so we do have one. Here we go. This is on our way to Eterna City. So we'll be hacking away at these trainers with their very powerful fish Pokemon. How do we feel about fishing, everybody? We like fishing. Getting out there on the lake, casting the rod, hooking your worm to a hook. So I feel like Dimitri might be a little over, <laughs> a little overpowering right now. That's okay. Dimitri is great. I just wanted to see what would happen. So Dimitri is a little bit higher level than the rest of our Pokemon. We don't want to go ahead and sacrifice valuable experience. So instead, seems like there's a lot of trainers that might be using Pokemon of the aquatic variety. In which case, we do have a two-pronged attack. How to handle that? I don't know if there's an item up here real quick, so I'm gonna check. There's berries, a lot of berries. Not our friend berry, but the edible kind. Once again, do not eat your friends. Cannibalism is probably a bad idea. Looks like two sets of Oran Berries, which are nice. Oran Berries are useful. Those are the ones that heal, heal 10 HP. And they have a close related cousin that we have not found yet. But when we do, we'll check that out. And we have another Honey Tree. Honey Tree! If I could... Okay. Great. I would love to slather that bark with honey. You bet. Okay. Bark slathered. I love when people slather my bark with honey. It's great. I really like the way the water looks in this game. Looks like they put a lot of... Oh, this is the Magikarp guy, isn't it? Yes. So in case you weren't aware, having a team of all Magikarp is actually the highest indicator of success within a Pokemon game. As we all know, Magikarp is... A pseudo-legendary with its unparalleled power of its splash attack. And I'm shocked we're even in this fight, to be completely honest. Like, this must just be complete luck of what's happening right now. But yeah, fishing. Been fishing a few times. 
Good way to get out on the lake, maybe? Or fish from the shore? I don't own a boat? I have not quite had my midlife crisis yet. Not sure if I'm going to lean towards buying a boat, or... Maybe I'll be feeling whimsical and I'll get a face tattoo. Who knows? I haven't quite decided yet. I haven't quite decided what midlife is, so... We'll get there someday. In the meantime... I'm going to be wailing on these Magikarp. I remember reading a story recently about how someone thought that Gyarados should have been the final evolution for the... Dratini line and that Dragonite would have made more sense with Magikarp because they're similar colorings, but that is absolutely false The story of Magikarp I guess is like Chinese folklore of a story a legend mythos of a carp Magikarp jumping into a waterfall and turning into a sea serpent, so that is on par with the design. I believe that that was very intentional. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't make a mistake like that. Game Freak never does. They're perfect in every way. Please don't sue me, Game Freak. And you can also see that being true in Pokemon Snap, the OG version for Nintendo 64. There are Magikarp in one of the water levels that, when provoked, and knocked into the waterfall of that level, they turn into a Gyarados. Pretty fun. So here we go, our seventh Magikarp in a row. We hadn't already seen enough. I was reading something recently, talking about the new Pokemon Arceus Legends, Legends Arceus, whatever it is. They mentioned that catching Pokemon is not gonna be the only way that you fill up a Pokedex anymore. There's gonna be ulter ulterior motives, and I guess that's not really the best way to put that, I should just say alternative methods. So that's what happens when you try to use fancy pants words. So alternative methods of filling up the Pokedex. In which case, I've read that you will have to catch multiple of the same Pokemon, perhaps? You have to face a Pokemon that's using a certain type of a move or using a certain type of an item. So it's a different approach. How do we feel about it? Not entirely sure yet. We'll have to give it a go. There is potential for it to be... It could be tedious. It could be something that doesn't really offer a lot of value. But once again, when I play through these types of games, I used to be a catch em all type. My original cart of diamond, I think there's like 400 and some Pokemon north of 400. And I got, I got pretty close. I transferred all the different Pokemon that I had from Ruby and Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green, I had them all. I caught all the games, that's for sure. So, you're welcome, Game Freak. Nintendo, Pokemon Company. Transferred them all to my Diamond Cart, and I feel like at one point I had close to a little bit over 400 myself. So that was back in my, in the days of my youth, when you had infinite time. I do not anymore. But, back in the good old days, caught myself all them Pokemons, and I'm not really about that anymore, unfortunately. Don't have the time, don't have the energy. More of a, more of a cash, cash player here. That's kind of what we're after. So here we are in Eternus City. Feels great riding a bike with the wind in your face. It sure does. I haven't ridden a bike in a long time, but it was a fun activity when I was a kid. So there was a comment made about how potentially Potentially, potentially, Galactic is going after weak trainers with their basic Pokemon, and that could potentially be a reason why their Pokemon are the Wurmples and the Zubats and the, you know, kind of the lower tier things of the Pokemon world. That could potentially be an explanation, which is fair. As you saw, that grunt looked like they wanted to try to snatch our Pokemon up, but um, we have a badge, so... Don't see that happening. Not today. But first, we are encountered by this very melanin deficient woman who only has one eye. It's very unfortunate. It must have been an accident when she was a child. She has very peculiar looking things hanging out of her hair. But she has recognized her Pokedex. So, salutations to this one eyed wonder, Cynthia. 
who was a trainer just like us. And as you'll learn later, that is very untrue. That is basically where the Venn diagram stops. She's very into Pokemon mythology. I already talked about mythology in this episode. Unintentional coincidence. But in Eterna City, there is a statue. Potentially of the Pokemon on the cover of this game. But thankfully, this random stranger has given us a gift. And that move is cut. Cut is another HM that we have with our HM thing from the Poketch. And she's just gonna be like, bye. It's interesting that it's TM93 because cut historically has just been HM1. That's it. But we will not be able to use cut for the time being because there's a gym battle ahead of us, which we will soon be doing. Oh, well, back in his day, things are just, time is just moving too quick. So we're gonna wander around Eterna City. This looks like this might be a bike shop. I wonder what could have given me that clue. Not sure. Okay, so there's a small child in here. It appears that the manager is currently caught up in the Team Galactic building. wonder what he's doing there. Off the clock. Mm -mm -mm, corporate's not going to like that. I don't know if there's an item back here or not. I'm going to click around. No. My dreams are ruined. I don't even get out of bed anymore during the day if I don't find hidden items. I think it's interesting. They're saying that there's a Team Galactic building that has gone up. More condominiums, more luxury apartments that we all need and love. Let's go ahead and gentrify Eterna City. But I think it's interesting that uh, they bring up the name. No, I got all confused because I'm talking to this guy. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy, the name raider, about Bonnie. See what he thinks of Bonnie's name. So here you go, in Eterna City, the name raider, this guy will allow you to change your Pokemon names, and we might do that in time, who knows. We do not have a Pokemon named Buizel, but actually that would be a pretty cool trade. We might fight a Buizel later. Buizel might even make it to the final team. So that's a little bit of a mystery for you. Great, good for you. But, I think it's interesting, back to my initial point before I got very distracted, as I usually do, is that Team Galactic has essentially, you know, made a building. Now, I feel like that's probably a little bit of an oversell. I don't think they made it. They probably just occupy this space. Maybe it was condemned. But if you do go in this building and talk to this very old woman, who for some reason has got her arms behind her back, maybe she was just on a nice Naruto run at her high school. Let's go ahead and check what that looks like. Let's go ahead and check out Cut as well while we're in the neighborhood. So we've got TM93, that's Cut. It's a decent move, I guess. And now that it's no longer considered an HM that we have to add to the Pokemon, you can just throw it on there if you're looking for a decent physical attack of the normal variety. And then there's Recycle. So this is the user Recycle's held item that's been used in battle so it can be used again. I guess that's kind of nice if you have a certain consumable that you're trying to get double the effect of like some sort of a berry that alters the state of battle, perhaps? I don't know. So this child has mentioned the Grand Underground. This kid has a lot of stickers on their balls, ready for a contest. That's a contest I can hang out with. And here's Mr. Blue Specs, nerd. And he's hanging out in a secret base. So these are all things that, uh... We'll be experiencing later. This is kind of a little bit of a little bit of a teaser. Also, I'm not sure where that old man is hanging out with those children upstairs. Kind of creepy. Where's Officer Jenny when you need her? Okay. You never trust a man that's balding. Okay, so. Yes, I already talked to you, but I forgot. That never happens. Okay. So continuing through our tour of Eterna City. We're going to want to get a bike, but the manager is MIA for now. We will probably bump into them before too long, I imagine. And this house is also empty. Great. So this may or may not have something in the, in the future. Who knows? 
for now it's pretty boring. We'll come back to the Pokemon Gym. We're not quite done with our tour yet of the of this huge bustling lively city here that's not creepy in any way. Only the one grunt for now. But eventually when we do get cut, we can knock down these bushes and confront Team Galactic because they're being turd burglars as per usual. Taking up so much of my space and time. So looks like this might be a little market. Uh, we don't like things that are bitter and smelly. Holistic medicine appears. A little homeopathy here in this shop. What do we got? Home of your effective yet inexpensive medicine. So here you go. This looks like, um, this is a full heal, heal powder, energy powder. Looks like that's a super potion. The energy root looks like a hyper potion. And the revival root is a revive. So there you go. If you're into that kind of stuff now, if you'd like to get some kind of higher end items. But if you're trying to have a Pokemon evolve, potentially that does so via happiness, that's a bad way to do it. Your Pokemon will be a little miffed at you. Not too pleased. We've got another grunt here trying to tell us what to do. And here at D Mike Industries, we make the rules. Also, these people are very strangely standing. Maybe they're about to do a rock, paper, scissors contest. That would make the most sense. Otherwise, um, these pleasantries don't quite line up to me. These people are very enamored by their Pokemon statue. We'll get there. My goodness, people. Tell me, is there anything else about this city that we should be interested in, or is it all just blah 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 stat? Okay, that's a pretty cool statue. I apologize, it's a cool statue. Let's go ahead and check it out. I wonder what Pokemon this could be. Daya, once created, brought time into being. In laughter and tears, the same time flows, such as the blessings of Daya. Text is barely legible and is faded completely in some places. It's unfortunate. Um, maybe take a little bit better care of your statues. You know, return to city. It's so important. Why is it fading? Oh, I don't know if I can get that item back there. Looks like I cannot. We'll have to come back with our cutting skills that we will gain from the gym. So we'll mosey on down there. And it, just a spoiler, not a spoiler, I guess a teaser. This gym's gonna be a little easier than the last one. We're actually pretty well equipped for it. And then after that, we can see what's in the... Nope, I didn't mean to go inside. Okay, well, here you go. Just kidding. Well, you see it, and now you don't. Okay. So we're gonna be taking on the gym next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you later. Bye.